so I'm going to present today um, the case of a social conflict in Peru, in the, in the south part of Peru, Arequipa, the, the city where I come from. It's a social conflict that uh, is a confrontation between a, a corporation, mining corporation called the Southern Cooper Corporation, and a, a agricultural minority, a group, a agricultural group. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna read through this this, this presentation that I present I prepare for you. So here we go. Uh, the Amaria conflict took place in Tambo Valley, Arequipa, two and a half hours from uh, the city of Arequipa, uh, in the south of Peru. While it, ha while it has a particular character, it also, as many of the social countries in Peru and another countries in Latin America, such as uh, Bolivia or uh, Colombia or Ecuador as well, stems from the confrontation between capitalist directives imposed through uh, uh, institutional, institutionalized practices and economic policies, and uh, mainly sociocultural claims of a particular group. Be they agricultural entrepreneurs, as this case, um, or even an ethnic minority, such as such as the ethnic ethnic group from the Amazon, one who have in Peru. In visible social dynamics, the Tiamaria conflict shows the opposed interests uh, of a mining corporation supported by the Peruvian state. Because the state has pretty much uh, supported this, this cooperation uh, along the whole process of the company. Uh, for the usufruct of resources to be utilized according to the demands of the market. And on the other hand, an agricultural based economic group of, of the Tambo Valley, which is the, the location there, where is the, the area to be uh, the minors to be extracted which is pretty much the, the location of the main project, the and, um, on the one hand, and in order, on the on other hand, a cultural-based economic group uh, whose interests are articulated with uh, the preservation of nature. So it's pretty much the, the agricultural group doesn't want, don't want the, the water to be polluted. Okay? Uh, Let's, let's first under, say how do we understand the economic and social rights. And it's important, uh, okay, it is important to uh, point out that economic and social rights are understood within the framework of uh, international covenant, covenant of economic, social, and cultural rights. This means they are understood as fundamental rights connected with political and civil rights, with self-determination, uh, they are inter interdependent with the resources of the environment, and the right to use them, the right to associate and defense and connected with defense and social interests, interest, connected also with the right to strike, with the improvement of methods of production, and with the improvement of environmental and industrial hygiene. The social, also with the social and mental health of the people, among other features pertaining to this case. So, the period, the period of time of the Amaria conflict spans from 2009 when the first environmental impact assessment was presented to this, uh, by the Southern Cooper Corporation until April uh, or May of 2015, where the, the high peaks of violence took place, and, and there was a statement. So, so far the, the conflict has reached the statement, the statement uh, level, uh, but there is no, no further uh, dialogue. Okay. So, uh, the case of the Amaria conflict is given in the backdrop of a constant economic growth in Peru based on the extraction of commodities, which is the nine ores, such as gold, cob, copper, oil, and in a, in a context as well of no international political threats or serious instability ensued from uh, anti-democratic upheaval. 
uh, as we had in the, in the previous decades in the internal conflict uh, carried out by um, the Middle East, also maybe some of you are from Latin America here and have, have heard about that. So it is marked, this conflict is marked by the indignation of a region traditionally, devo traditionally devoted to agriculture, uh, which denounced on the one hand the imposition of its extractivist economic practices as a threat over agriculturally based model system, and on the other hand uh, the threat posed by mining activities to a hybrid resource, that is water, uh, for their production. The farming population showed the relentless rejection against the mining project, which led to social protests and protests and clashes between farmers and policemen, as well as to a halt to commerce and educational activities. It is important to point out as well that the project will generate uh, $150 million annually uh, in mining royalties, which is quite a lot of money, but the, the agricultural group that does not care about money. Uh, in a general view, <coughs> In a general view, considering the asymmetrical nature awarded to the parties, the dynamics uh, was determined by a mobilization after a decision made in a high level of power, of power, that is the Ministry of Energy and Mine, uh, which is the uh, authority to handle, uh, to pro which promotes uh, investment and handles uh, all the uh, of the instructive industry in Peru. Uh, so a mobilization after a, a decision made in a high level of power. So a social protest and violence came about as, as a result of this, uh, of this decision. In this sense, the high peaks of violence were given after the events related to, to the first try to approval of the environmental impact assessment, uh, and then the, the, right the, uh, pretty much the approval of the, this environmental impact assessment, which took place in August of 2014. So this is uh, maybe you can understand this this uh, scheme that I tried to do, but that, the idea is that there, there was a, a social Convulsion and violence after this uh, the, uh, decision made in a high level in the in the Ministry of Energy and Mind. For some scholars, there are serious serious suggestions that the Peruvian government has favored the transnational mining companies in a context of dependence on extractive money uh, activities and financial for an investment, it has failed to guarantee a rule of law that therefore caused product protraction of the company. What becomes relevant as well is that all managing instruments developed at different levels of the state organizations that handle the conflict significantly define the course and intensity of this conflict. Indeed, a general perception of mismanagement is attributed to the uh, performance of Peruvian state. In similar cases such as uh, Las Bambas, which is another conflict in, in the uh, countryside in Peru, or Yanacocha, which is in the north part in Cajamarca, uh, use the same story. From my point of view, which is shared by the story conducted by Tanaka and some other uh, authors, Tanaka is a Peruvian researcher as well. There is a political and economic structure that put con puts conditions for the conflict and to the con uh, potential outrage of human rights. So let's go. Let's take a quick view, to the, uh, a quick, quick glance at the economic model, which is newly very easy. Uh, it's the economic model of, of the Peruvian state and many of the the American countries as you might know. So generally speaking, neoliberalism is thought as a doctrine that awards the state the task to overly promote and facilitate free trade through legal means 
that is the a minimum intervention of the state, such as the liber uh, uh, modern liberalism, but exacerbated in this case, liberalism. the promotion of privatization as well as keeping low salaries and not, not satisfying internal demand, uh, as was the case in Peru. The, con the neoliberal economy did not satisfy what did not care of the internal demand. It was politically and economically stranded by the Washington Consensus as a formula for reactivating economies in crisis, especially in, in Latin American countries. So the Washington Consensus is a kind of treaty or agreement made by the uh, World Bank and the uh, uh, National Monetary, uh, Monetary Fund and the United States Congress to, to uh, give loans or give uh, in, uh, invest in Latin America in order to uh, handle the crisis we had uh, in the 90s and the beginning of the 2000s as well. So in Peru, the development of the neoliberal model became efficient in the general backdrop of a politically, politically defined structural tradition marked by oblivion. Certainly, the inequality that came along with the economic model of neoliberalism suited in the scheme of inequality prompted, prompted by political mismanagement, which is a very serious issue in Peru. The political, the politicians from the simple world, they don't care about uh, enforcing the uh, already existing law, uh, existing law regulations for environment. And yeah, there is. So such political failure in terms of the privation of needs to an applied law or institutional flaws for, for human competences, human skills, that generated structural violence was enabled to a historic imposition in Peruvian social dynamics. A state that, that prioritizes the production base and the exploitation of natural resources as the only way to develop. So in the case of uh, Peru, the commo commodity state's economy was highly empowered by the new liberal doctrine, resulting in the degradation of agricultural activities, which are granted less access to the development uh, when confronted in the same scenario of, uh, of extractive industry. So, uh, in concrete, the Peruvian case of of the neoliberal extractivist adjustment uh, promoted by the uh, Washington Consensus uh, were viable through the economic legislation present in the Constitution of 1993 and a group of uh, regulations and decrees given in the Fujimori administration, uh, in which the government fostered and granted privileges to extractive industry for foreign and national capitals, big capital, granting lands for it, and which is to be understood as uh, structural violence in terms of culture, as some of you know. So let's take a quick look, a look to the regulations. So the use must decree uh, 1492 to the general law of mining, the decree number uh, 708 or the law for fostering investment in mining sector set the stable tax regime for mining corporations. So the, that means uh, mining corporations only pay a specific tax, uh, not according to the market the specific. Uh, the decree 757. Uh, or law for private investment, modified uh, the code of environment and eliminated the norms seen as unreal by enterprises. And the youth must decree uh, 1693, uh, the regulation for environmental protection in mining activities, and defined the obligations for firms and set the Ministry of Energy and Mine as a relevant authority to settle environmental issues. So the Ministry of Energy and Mine is at the same time the authority which uh, promotes investment in, in extractive industry, but at the same time they uh, 
they being or they judge they are like a judge for in cases of uh, environmental uh, pollution or environmental issues. So let's take a quick look, look, uh, quick look of some pictures of the clashes and the protests in Arequipa in the south. And let's take a quick look of the role of the state in this case. The main perspective of analysis is the political role of Peruvian executive levels, such as the Ministry of Energy and Mine, in terms of a mediator role. So this, these uh, uh, findings uh, I, were the result of a, of a series of NPA qualitative interviews I conducted to the macro level uh, stakeholders, so that the majors of the um, uh, of the district that surround the area of the of the structure of the, of the mining project. So after conceptualizing the findings of the qualitative research, uh, we found that the state uh, committed disregard of agricultural development. The Ministry of Energy and Mine held a biased, extractive vision of development in which agriculture turned out to be marginalized. Imposition of state political power, and not, not only the, they capture the people who committed crime while protesting, but they also suppress. Uh, they also kill people. There were uh, uh, um, uh, maybe eight people who captured this. So the non warranty of basic rights. Uh, according to said by interview interview actors, the imposition of the state. Uh, Cause the Tamu Valley population's basic rights to be denied in many instances during the conflict. Uh, so, also the improper process, processes of participation, uh, because the, also the, the government or the ministry uh, cancelled the, the audiences uh, which were to be, uh, which were to, uh, to make the, the evaluation of the environmental impact assessment. And uh, like arbitrarily, they cancel uh, allegedly for uh, for not, not 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 having the the, the safe safety uh, for safety reasons allegedly. Okay, uh, and then the Peruvian government aligned with Southern Copper Corporation. This is considered a major finding. Uh, taking into account the context of the of, of the roundup tables, the ministry did not summon both parties. So, the representatives of the of the of the company were not in the, the roundup tables. So, um, from a general view of the character of the role of the state, it was found that the still decentralization is not a finished process. Uh, so it was, it was found uh, as well that uh, a confrontation with the levels of government, <coughs> uh, there was a confrontation with the levels of government between the, the uh, uh, go governmental uh, government of Arequipa, which is the uh, local government, and the uh, national government. So the solutions proposed for this case, what I propose in my, propose in my research, was uh, a reform of the state is necessary and this came to, comes to be a major basis for undertaking resolution processes. There is a balanced proposal in this sense is not to oppose, not to oppose the market relations to any other alternative form of subsistence, but to find and give the proper value to this type of relations as handled by human needs and human goals. The vindication of uh, economic rights can, can be thought, therefore, as the access given to the groups in the framework of these relations. In this sense, the reform of constitutional articles that are provided with ambiguity in favor of the capital itself is proposed as a way for handling the structural violence from above. Another solution is the Articulation of institutional goals between ministers. 
such as the Ministry of Energy and Mine and the Ministry of Environment. The Ministry of Environment didn't play, didn't play a, a defining role, was uh, uh, marginalized all, all the time in this, in this, in this case. So, to finish, it's important to consider that the issue of imposition of economic model can be reread as a manifestation of, from my point of view, neocolonialism given by directives and policies from international organizations such as the World Bank and uh, the Washington Consensus that I just mentioned. An approach of recognition implies eradicating every neocolonial criteria of social and economic relations which is also casted over the, the notion of a new understanding of human rights as unprovided with any type of new Okay, thank you. Kuczynski, the, the current the foreign president, uh, I mean, so far the, the, the environmental impact assessment was uh, approved in 2014. Uh, so it was it was done even even though there were many many protests. Uh, as you said, Mala just let let the, the let, let the issue in, in the hands of the company. He said uh, that we are gonna let the company. Approach to, to the uh, population of Tambo Valley again. And he kind of, as you said in Spanish, he washed his hands. And the current president, Kuczynski, has not, has not uh, he just visited the, the region uh, in, in January of this, of this region, of this, of this year. And he, he just the promises of, of development, of sustainable development. Yes. Everybody does, but uh, so far it's a, it, the conflict is in a statement. So, it's like no, no, no dialogue. Like every, both parties in the state have sort of brought in the, the, the case. But I think I think in the in, in the interest of the proving state now, uh, uh, I think the interests are to, to to carry out the project anyway. So not now because we think it's very. I think the work might be quite. Yeah, I, I mean, the process will continue. Yeah. The, the, neoliberal, the neoliberal model is still going to power. The food and corn. We hope, we hope there, are, there is another pressing or new, new, new uh, forces in, in the Congress and the uh, you know, civil society. There, there were uh, many, I would say, many NGOs and civil society organizations, uh, and they they helped in the in the in the task, task of, of lobbying. In the, in the, they accompanied in the in the process, and, and some of them like uh, cooperation or uh, labor or organizations that were uh, they they issued reports. Reports of, of the case, so that the people, the population, uh, they acknowledge what what's happening in this case. 
and be aware of, of, of the social, of the social issue, environmental issue. But you see, uh, NGOs they, they don't have a a, a decisive. They don't make decisions for the long. They just do the lobbying, the lobbying, the lobbying work. Yeah, they, they have they have been. Sure. Uh, we're going to move on to our last question. Um, my name is Mark, I'm from the United States, but I've lived in the last year, and uh, I got... Oh, in, in Peru? Yeah, in Peru, in Lima. Um, I kind of got a different perspective because I was in Lima, I follow a lot of people in Lima, and so uh, a lot of their perspective actually is that, not in this particular case, but a lot of companies in America, um, that what they'll do is, is a private by all the environmental regulations, the best of their company can everything. And a lot of what happens is that they'll uh, you know, offer a sum of money to you know, the business that are there and everything in the area. And the people there are not very educated and uh, the money is not distributed well at all. And so a lot of times they say, and I don't perfectly believe this, and this is an argument, is that a lot of times these protests and these arguments are anything to get you know, more reparations or anything like that for a better deal from these mining companies. And then when they do actually get them, a lot of it is just like kind of centralized and put for the mayor's like new townhouse or new soccer field. And you know, the mining companies are just doing a job, but these uh these people are kind of messing with the money. So I was wondering if like the conclusions and the research that came across any of these uh situations is that a recommendation of education uh, specifically, the situation in the community is Yeah, yeah. Uh, in my research, I, I as you said, there, there, I propose uh, taking uh, tasks of uh, campaigns of uh, uh, sensibilization in the in the, in the population about the case. Uh, as you said. Uh, there were, there were no uh, bribes like to the, to, the, to the majors in this case because the whole majors were were part of the of the of the front defense so because this in this case the uh, of, of the the um, Maria conflict uh, the, group, the 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 uh, agricultural group didn't didn't want the, the benefits of, of the, they don't want the benefits of, of the mining. They don't want. They don't want the royalties. They just want to keep the, the way they work and uh, agricultural subsistence and agricultural way of production. Uh, in other cases, in the Amazon, there, there were cases in uh, and oil is uh, an American yes, corporation. They bribe the, the, the heads of, of the this, uh, Amazon groups and. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. Okay, thank you once again. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, just before we go, uh, just a quick announcement. Uh, before tomorrow, I'd kindly ask everybody to please refer to your schedule for all the times and the sessions tomorrow. And with that, we're going to conclude uh, uh, today's speeches on the 2017 Berlin Human Rights Congress. Have a good night, and we'll see you all tomorrow.